what's up? This your boy, Big Man. You already know what it is, man. So let's get right to it. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Quando Rondo. Now, Quando Rondo has got the internet going wild right now because he recently released a six-minute clip of his, of his interview with Angela Yee, and it's titled November 6th. Now, I was kind of at odds with that title for a second because I'm like, you know, it gives the impression that maybe they talked about this on November 6th, but there's no way, right? The the interview is really based on it. They're going over the whole situation with King Von, man. And Quando Rondo is basically telling his side of it. And it looks like it's going to be broken into parts. Now, in this first part, Quando Rondo dives right into that night and right into the situation that we've seen on the camera and everything from his description. Now, from what he's saying, I mean, it's not too, it's not that off. Now, is he shooting his man some bail? Yeah, it seems like it. But man, let's discuss it. Before we get into the specifics, though, do me a favor. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And man, let's get it. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, man, let's talk about it, man. So, Quando Rondo in this interview with Angela Yee, they dive right into it. They go right to that night, right to the second, right to everything. But he does preface it a little bit with, you know, an explanation of his relationship with with Lil Durk and King Von, man. Now, he said some interesting things, and it, it was it was eye-opening. Now, what he said first off was his relationship with Lil Durk was really, really good, man. Like, they had a great relationship, and his relationship with King Von was good. Now, he refused to say their names because he said people would accuse him of clout chasing. But if you look at the history, man, they've recorded together and stuff. So, I mean, they've been filmed together and stuff. So, it, it's no surprise to anybody that they might have had a relationship. I just didn't understand the extent of it until he talked about it. Now, in the interview, he talks about the fact that Lil Dirk wasn't even charging him for verses, which is remarkable, man, because, you know, in the hip-hop community, man, charging for verses is just like, it's it's regular stuff, man. That's just how you, you, you pay your way into the game, and you always, you might do a verse for a verse, but basically, he was like, man, Lil Dirk, you know, didn't even charge him for a verse, you know, for their song, The, the Safest, that he had together on his album. Now, Quando Rano thought from his explanation that their relationship was all good. Now, I don't know where there's a miscommunication or is he just putting on a little bit for the camera or not, because there obviously was some type of issue between him and King Von, you know, after all that footage and after they had been cool previously, man, because why else would, would Von run up on Quando Rondo, allegedly, and start trying to put the beats on him. Now, I will say this. Quando Rondo, from when he got ran up on, did not like look like he, he came off soft. Like, I'll, I hate when people try to one-sided. I always play the middle. He was standing his ground and swinging from the hip like you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? Like anybody would expect another man to do. And, yeah, he got bombarded and he started to back up because everybody started to rush in and that could get ugly. But man, for, for the most part, it looked like he was, you know, trying to stand, stand his ground or whatever, right? And I hate to use that term because, you know, there's a legal implication in the whole saying he was standing his ground. But you guys understand what I mean. I mean, toe to toe, not saying that he's legally, you know, protected by whatever, you know what I mean? But we'll, we'll get to that in a section, second, excuse me. Now, furthermore in there, he talks about how he looked up to Lil Durk and how he thought everything was cool, right? So, man, I, I don't know, man. It seems like in that expl explanation that he was definitely either putting on for the camera because we it's well documented that there was an issue there between 4K Trey and King Von and them and, and Lil Durk and them, man. It, there's a separation there. So how in the world can he put in this interview with uh, Angela Yee, put on a face where he's pretty much like, oh, I was surprised that they just even ran up on me, you know? And that was kind of what he was basing it on. Now, a part of me thinks that he's doing Lil' Tim a solid. He's shooting him some bail to make it sure that it seems like, you know, Lil' Tim was coming to protect him. He's shooting Lil' Tim a lot of bail in this, you know? And he, he neglects to say Lil' Tim's name, really. I don't, th I don't even think he said his name. He did a great job of trying not to say names because he said he's been... You know, a lot of people have accused him of clout chasing in the past. But come on, Quando, you shot a whole video where you had a lookalike Lil Dirk and y'all was running down on him allegedly in the video. You know, it was just uh, to say that, that you know, you, you're covering up now because you don't want to be clout chasing. I get it, dude. I get it, man. 
you don't want that stigma of being a cloud chaser, but I mean, they're so you're so far in it now, it just doesn't even matter. You might as well say names or whatnot. But, you know, I'll have to shoot them some bail. You probably don't want to say names because, you know, there's legal implications in everything you do at this point. Quandarano continues in his story by saying that Lil Tim and him were basically debating on going in the club. Like, Quando Rondo, it really wasn't a debate for him. He knew that he didn't want to go in the club. He was just going to sit in the car and sleep. And Lil' Tim had just came back from jail. Now, for those of you who don't know, Lil' Tim was arrested in August of 2020. And it was like a, a drug sting, a drug bust or whatnot. I don't know how in the world he was arrested for a drug sting or whatever in, 2020, in August 2020 and he was out. But this is the, you know, the facts of that case. So Lil' Tim was arrested with like five other people. And in this arrest, it lists his name. It says uh, his charges were attempt or conspiracy to violate Georgia Controlled Substance Act theft by receiving stolen property obstruction. So, huh, out of all the people in that ring, I think he has the least charge, man. Receiving stolen property and obstruction. I mean, that's nothing compared to the other folks in the case. So, Maybe there there is a good reason that he was out. Like he maybe he just had to do some county jail time because I mean the substance that they were found with found with is legal in other states. You know what I'm saying? So that way you guys get an understanding. You you know what my drift? You get my drift. So I don't know. Maybe he had just got up out for that, and that's why he was so thirsty. And that's basically what Quan Rano said. He said little Tim was like, man, I need to get on some you know talk to some girls or whatnot, which is understandable. But man. As soon as he left the car or whatever and stood by the vehicle, he said it was a $250,000 vehicle. And when I look in that, that video, those videos, I don't, I'm like, what car were they in? Like, was, was it something that I missed or something like that? But I don't know, man. I don't know the most expensive cars out there because I ain't never going to be looking at something that I cannot buy like that. You know what I mean? But he went on to explain that that situation led to, you know, other situations uh, led to the situation that we saw with the shooting. Now, they didn't get into the shooting, and they cut it off right at the peak time. So I see how they're going to do this. They're going to run this thing in parts and drain it for all it's got, man, because it's, it's already receiving a lot of traffic right now. And now, in the very last part of this is where, you know, you get most of the information, though. Like, the very last minute, that's where we really start to get to the action or whatever. And I hate to say action like this isn't real, people. And real folks didn't lose their life. Rest in peace, King Von. You know what I mean? But that's where you start to get into really what's, what went down. And Quando, man, either he was talking to an attorney who told him the, the right things to say before this interview. Or he's just legitimately very smart at picking his words and what to say when it comes to these type of dealings. Because if you listen to what he says at that last part, he says, you know, I had an out-of-body experience, basically. I don't, I don't know what happened. Some dude just hit me, you know? Almost acting like he doesn't know who he was getting into a confrontation with, who hit him. You know, it, it, it was just a reaction. Everything was a reaction from the fact that they was, you know, getting, getting attacked, which is... It, which is interesting because from a legal standpoint, I'm pretty sure that's what your lawyer would want you to say. Now, I am no attorney, but that just sounds like something that he ran through a couple of people before he got on this interview to say it because he is definitely not being re reckless at all. You know, as far as shooting little Tim some bail, like he shoots him a lot of bail. And obviously he, he's got a lot of love for little Tim and that's his homeboy. And you could you could see in this that basically, man, his story is just lining up to make sure that little Tim has a fighting chance in his court case as well. Now, some people are going to say it's a lot of cap because, you know, he, he leaves out names and he doesn't go into like he doesn't go into the specifics how we see them. But man, just understanding that he knows that this interview is going to go out to everybody. You can see the play, man. You can see the play. Now, what do you guys think, man? If you haven't checked it out, it's only six minutes long. Go ahead and check out that part one. It's already getting like a lot of views right now. Like people are are, are, are looking at it. If you looking at the, if you're checking this out, you probably already seen it. But do you feel that Quando Rondo is uh, just making a good case for Lil Tim in this interview, or do you believe he's being wholehearted in what he's saying and is describing the situation as it took place? Now, with that, this being your boy Big Man, please do me a favor. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And make sure you hit that notification bell so that way you get a notification every time I drop this hot content. And we out of here. Peace.